Coffee stuff. Everybody wants it. No one can find it. It's so expensive. Who would ever buy it in the first place? Coffee stuff. All right, so I would sit here and pretend like I am not sweating in the middle of winter right now, but I just had to pull out this huge chunk of walnut off of this board right here. And the wall almost came crashing down. It was a whole thing because I kept on telling myself it'd be easier for me just to pull it out of the bottom of the stack. It wasn't, it wasn't easier. But I took that over, I cut it down to size. We have this big old chunk of walnut and a lot of people are gonna get mad at me because I am just using this for testing. The main reason that I grabbed it is because it is an inch thick. That's the main reason that I got it. Oh no, in the back of my car right now, there is a piece of red oak stair tread that is one inch thick that would be perfect for this project. One second. Red oak, cheap, easy to find, one inch thick. So y'all are probably gonna see me use stair treads a lot on this channel and that is because they're just very simple to go to the store and pick these up. At the beginning of this project, I completely forgot that I had this, but I'm glad that I remembered. So we're gonna be using the stair tread in order to prototype our bases, because that's one thing that I'm not exactly really sure on is the depth that I need to put all of these troughs. Because the K-cup stand essentially is just made out of two parts. One, it's gonna be our board that all of our little cups are gonna fit into. We're just really cutting out holes and profile cutting. And then this is just a stand where all that slots into. Since we're not making the slot at a specific angle because we can't go underneath and create that angle with these specific machines, I really wanna make sure that we have a straight trough, not switching a ton of bits. Speaking of bits, we're only using one bit for this project overall. I'm specifically using two just so that I can label each of the parts so that we can easily identify which one is at a quarter inch depth, a half inch depth, and three quarter inch depth in this one inch thick wood. So y'all are coming along with me for this ride to figure out which one we're really gonna be using. We're gonna be cutting out two different back plates for this project, and I think both of them have their own allure. So let me know down in the comments which one you think is best. Okay, so in order to secure this down, since we're just prototyping and I don't really care too much about it, we're just gonna be putting double-sided tape on it. I think it's gonna hold perfectly fine for this project. Like I said, we're gonna be putting in our 60 degree groovy Jenny just to quickly and easily mark and identify what depths we're gonna be putting in later. Next, we're gonna switch over to our downtown Jenny, which is the only one that you really need for this project. And it is one of the three bits that you need to see and see with me. Go ahead and check out the discount code below if you're interested in some brand new bits, because those are the only three that I'm gonna be using on this channel moving forward. You're not having to get swamped down with knowing which bits I'm using. I have all of those feeds and speeds available for download for all of these CNC with me members so that you can grab that tool database and put that into CarveCo, Vectric, and Fusion. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. So all of that is available over at cncwithme.com if you're interested. After we've cut out all of these bases, I'm gonna switch over and I'm putting down some half inch plywood. Originally, since I had murdered a piece of beautiful walnut for this project, I also decided to murder some of my walnut veneered plywood so that it would all match and look really great. So since we already have the piece of walnut veneered plywood cut out, I'm gonna use that for this project. And that's how we're gonna be cutting out our two back pieces for this so that we can have a, I don't know, pretty good looking project. I think with this red oak in particular, I'm going to be staining this black and I think it's gonna look pretty darn good right next to that walnut. So hopefully after all these operations are done, we are left with five individual parts that we can mix and match and figure out the best way that they interact with each other.
All right, so everything cut out perfectly. I then went back with my DeWalt router and I went ahead and put a 3 16 inch round over on all the holes and then all the profiles. Then I jumped over and pretty much did the same thing on my shaper as well, uh, which is, you know, essentially just a fancy router table. As you can see right here, we've got two different styles. One of them is a little bit more traditional and then this one is a little bit more modern. And as you can see, they can just easily come in and out of here. We're not really trying to fasten this in place, especially if you're gonna be selling these, you can quickly and easily flat pack this and send it on its way. But the main thing that I wanted to test out are the three different depths that we can have this project at. Right here, this is our 2.5 inches that we went ahead and pocketed down, which is where this sits on. Then we have a half inch and then we have a three quarter inch at 0.75 inches. One of the things that was very surprising to me is that there's not a dramatic difference, but there is enough. So this one is definitely leaned back further than the 0.75. Well, we'll see if y'all can see that or not. But these are the two main different versions. If we went to our 0.5 inch, it kind of splits the gap a little bit, but I don't see a ton of difference between the 0.5 and 0.75. So I think in order to save time, if you did want to do these yourself, I probably would just go ahead and knock out the 0.75 version, not even go down that low and stick with either looking at the 0.25 or half inch to kind of decide for yourself which style you like more. I kind of specifically like the 0.25 inch. I think it leans back pretty far and that might give people a better advantage to see what type of K cup they're grabbing. But that's just me. I think this really boils down to personal preference. I really, really like the walnut that I used on this and I'm excited to put some finish on it. So before we go any further, I do wanna make sure that I put a round over on these bases. And the reason that I didn't do it beforehand is I wanted to make sure that once I do a round over and put this in, that it's not creating any type of massive difference. So that's why I went ahead and set it up without doing those first. So I'm just putting a 3 16 inch round over because that's what I have in my router. I think a quarter inch round over would look absolutely fantastic on these. Once we've done that and we're happy with the fit and finish that we have on these, I'm going to spray these with lacquer and then the bases I'm going to dye those black for those who saw my pocket knife tray a few weeks ago You remember when I dyed things black we're gonna be using India ink. It looks freaking fantastic So let me go ahead put a round over on these and throw some finish on it And then we'll talk about how they actually fit and which one I really do like after I've had a little bit of time to spend with both of them all right, this week's mystery file, we are gonna be running two bits, our bowl cut bit and then our V bit, which I'm assuming we're gonna be cutting, you know, some type of a tray and then putting text in there. I don't know. If you're new to this, Mitt sends me over some random G code and then I put it in the machine and I run it. So we're all about to find out what we're gonna see. First I drink the coffee, then I do the things. This is the first time that I've run one of these mystery files with a piece of material that wasn't exactly what MITS had defined, and it worked out pretty well. <laughs> it was just slightly smaller than 12 by 12, and this worked out great. Thanks, MITS. Well, I got everything all set up. MITS had sent me over the files, beautiful files. Everything looked great. We've got all of our bases, and we were trying to figure out exactly how those are gonna fit. And I didn't once think about the holes. One second. Wow, what a journey we've gone on just to get to this place where we have some holes that actually fit our K-cups. Now, if you're wondering how that happens, that happens because Hamilton transposes numbers very easily, which is not great for the profession that I've chosen. So instead of making these holes the correct, which was 1.875, I believe, something close to that. Um, no, it's 1.6875. That's what they're supposed to be. I had made them 1.4 something. I sent those numbers to Mitz. He did what I asked. It was too small. So instead of cutting out both of the designs, I just have the modern version. But do you prefer this more traditional version with the little top on it? The reason that I think that this is pretty cool is because this area right here is very customizable. You can put somebody's last name, you can put the coffee house or whatever. My main reasoning for having all these holes and straddled in different ways is so that in your vectors, you can just delete one of these and have a blank space, whether it's at the top or the bottom, anywhere you want. So you don't technically have to have this area in order to brand it. So let me know down in the comments down below which style you like more, traditional versus modern. Now, I did set this up originally with 0.75 and 0.25 inch bases. One second. Thankfully, both of these versions fit the different bases that we have. And originally, I really liked the 0.25 inch because it has just 
more of a lean back, especially if you're putting this on your kitchen countertop and you're shoving this underneath a upper cabinet, it's going to have a little bit more lean to it. So you're going to be able to quickly and easily see the types of coffee that you have easier. Or for people who are taller, maybe that's just an easier thing that other people don't really appreciate. But for me, that was my first thought into it. But the more that I've been playing around with this specifically, the 0.25 just doesn't have enough depth in order to make it so that it's reliable. The 0.75, I feel like it's like in there a lot better. And it's just, I don't know, it, it feels a lot more stable so that when somebody's going in there and grabbing out their K-cups, I don't feel like it's bringing out the entire thing. Whereas this, if I could show you, I feel like it would bring up with it a little bit more. And that's because of the depth that we have right here. So I definitely would do half of an inch. This one is at three quarters of an inch. And I think that that's the way to go. That's the way that I'll be making them for myself. So one other thing that I do want to mention is that this base is made out of one inch thick material. I would definitely use three quarter inches or more with this because you want something that's very heavy down here specifically. I've got a version of this in my house that has a marble base and it's essentially the same design. Uh, but that marble base is what makes it so that once this is all up here and if you want to make this bigger, longer, wider or anything like that, it's not going to be tipping over because this base is very heavy. So I would use a very heavy piece of material. The harder the wood, the heavier it's going to be. Or if you wanted to experiment with something like soapstone, that is such a cool material and it can easily be cut on your CNC machine. Of course, you have to be careful with your feeds and speeds, especially your step down and how much you're taking off it at a time. But soapstone is something that I cannot wait to explore here on the channel. The issue is it's pretty expensive and it's fairly difficult to find. But for right now, we've got red oak. I'm so happy with the way that it turned out with this black stain on top. And one of the things that I do wanna caution you about, if you saw the white oak ones in the past, white oak and red oak accept stains and dyes just in a completely different way. And that's just how they're built up and their grain structure and how porous the material is. Specifically with this red oak, after I dipped it down into the India ink, it had a really nice black finish, but the longer that it sat out and the more that that ink was exposed to the top grain, it started to expand and it started to expose different pores in the grain that didn't accept the ink, which is very easy to combat. You just go back with a second coat or as you're wiping it off, normally that's going to fill in those areas easily. But I absolutely love this black finish. I didn't put anything else on top of it. Uh, it's just bare as it is. And right now it's not bringing off anything but if somebody were to rehydrate this, if they were to spill coffee on it, it might rehydrate that ink a little bit and cause some type of an issue. So this can be made in a ton of different ways. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in the toolpath tutorial on cncwithme.com. We're going to have all of these files available, both the modern and the traditional version. So you'll not only have the SVG and the DXF files for this, but you also have Carveco and Vectric files that are essentially ready to save your G code and ready to be cut. And like I said, the toolpath tutorial where I'll be going through all the little steps, but this is a very simple project, really just using one bit for this. And if you wanted to, you could create different areas to be able to brand this in different ways. Because the majority of the projects that I put here on the channel, I'm thinking about how does somebody brand this in a way that makes it just that much more appealing to a customer that's coming by. Normally for me, that's going to apply a whole lot more towards local items. So things that are local here in town, that if I was at a market, somebody would see this and they might think, how's that different than anything that I would see at Target or at Walmart? The way that you make it different is by adding in something about a local monument, something about a local area that people go to, a place that they eat. You can use this as a blank canvas to be able to create it in the way that sets your products aside from everybody else's. That is one of the awesome things about being an at-home manufacturer and just being able to small scale build things is you can customize things in a way that makes sense to you that does not make sense to very large manufacturers that wouldn't spend the amount of time that's needed to produce just 50 or 20 of a single item that you can do in an afternoon and create an entire set of items that only you're able to sell. So hopefully this project was helpful to some of y'all out there. I know that it took us a little bit to get here and all that was my own stupid mistakes, but the walnut that I cut out at the very beginning of this is going to be so nice where I'm gonna be spotlighting one of the CNC with me members and the project that they make and sell locally. And I'm gonna have a fairly generic version of it, but I think that y'all are going to like it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will see and see you later. Well, next Friday. Bye.